Wow, that was obnoxious. Um, you didn't see this because I ended up having to bail on that take of the video and uh, and start over again. But uh, what happened just now was I discovered that in the process of moving everything around in my office, which I've been doing over the past several days, uh, the USB cable got unplugged from my tablet, so nothing was working. And uh, that was really horrifying when it was actually time to get started on a stream. And, uh, and I couldn't because my, uh, my system was not working. Uh, anyway, I've just voice connected over on the Discord server. If you want to watch these things live, then you got to jump up my Discord. But um, if you just want to watch them on YouTube, that is fine too. So, uh, so if you just want to watch me sketch badly or weekly on YouTube, then that's fine. Like, comment, subscribe to all the YouTube shit. All that stuff. It really helps the channel out. Not really. It doesn't. Uh, it doesn't make that big of a difference, honestly. I'm. I'm not algorithm friendly. I've never been algorithm friendly. I'm probably never going to be algorithm friendly. But uh, let me click over and get the. Uh, we'll get the stream started over on the Discord. So uh, all the people who actually like me and care about me can watch the stream. Oh, look, there's nobody here. Wow. <laughs> God. I just finished doing uh, doing my only Minecraft video that I've done all week because I've been moving everything around in my office. And, uh, and having just done that, let's see, what what is going on here? Oh, what the? There we go. Okay. Um, in the, in the, uh, in the process of doing that, I get all wrapped up on stuff. And it, it, what I was going to say was I've been calling the, uh, Minecraft videos. I do dead streams because, uh, I, I may as well be streaming. They're pretty much a stream of consciousness thing. I'm just, uh, not doing it live. And the major things that I've been up to over the course of the past week are, um, well, I've been buying a bunch of shit on the Steam Winter Sale. I wonder if uh, I wonder if anime hair works the same way on guys as it does on girls. I'm not really good at drawing guys' hair. Let's uh, let's erase the skull here. See how this actually comes out. How does that? Uh, how does the silhouette of it look? First of all. The silhouette of it looks okay, and then, uh, then we've got something, at the very least. Well, the hair obviously comes from one central location on the head, and that's where you need to think about it flowing from at all times. Uh, that's not bad. So it is kind of the same basic thing. You've got your center, and then you've got your sides, and you've got this bit at the side, and you've got your ear, and you've got behind the ear, and then you've got the back. And in the middle of all that, you've got kind of the face. But uh, we've already gone over that in, uh, in previous stuff. Um, I have no idea what I'm going to talk about today. I have no idea what I'm going to do today. I've been so busy the last week moving shit around and putting in the new monitor and getting it in place and moving the camera. And now the camera's in the wrong place. So I look up at where the camera was and the, you're not there. You're over here. And I go, oh, oh, there you are. But, um... You know, there, there's good points and there's bad points to this. And uh, one of the good points is that the camera is now pointed at a reasonable location that I could do music-based streams. You can actually see the keyboard and over here the uh, the DJ console. So uh, th those are things that you can actually see and that are potentially possible features for a future video. And uh, that would be nice, I guess, I, I suppose. Of course, you, uh, you can't really see the, the anime picture. I guess I could move the Cradle of Filth stuff, but uh, I don't want to. I like my Cradle of Filth stuff. Uh, you can't really see the, uh, the guitars, which are off camera. 
over here, but they're there. They're, uh, they're accessible. And I'm still trying to figure out how to organize and arrange stuff, but, um, but let's get to sketching. What, what is it that I want to sketch? I got to do something. I got to work on something that I'm not good at. You know what? It's got to be, uh, it's got to be legs. We got to work on legs today. And, um, in order to work on legs, I need to kind of think of how these are constructed. So let's talk, let's talk a little bit about the construction of legs and the pelvis and how everything fits together. Because what you've kind of got here, uh, let's talk about the anatomy of the leg and let's, let me get some kind of reference. Uh, um, Hey, what do you know? We're going to Hogarth again. That's where we always go is Hogarth. I don't know. I don't know why anybody expects anything different. It's, uh, it's going to be Hogarth. I always go to Hogarth. Now, where do we have uh, something on the uh, something on the lower body? Uh, this is the arm. Yeah, we're already on like page 170, and we haven't covered the legs yet. A lot of stuff on. Okay, here we go. The leg and the upper leg masses. All right. Um, and this is very kind of off the cuff. I haven't done any preparing for this or uh, or anything of that nature. Uh, as luck would have it, I do have the... Um, I do have the PDF version or the Kindle version of Dynamic Anatomy. So... Um, Turn that off so we're not uh, running into that. Let me go ahead and uh, I'm going to jump up here onto my other monitor and open up my Kindle. I use the Kindle PC program because that's uh, that's helpful and useful and it's a nice thing to have. And um, we're looking at uh, this runs about 187 through. There's the lower leg. The foot and ankle. The foot itself. And it runs through to about 223, and then we get the figure in depth of space and nine principles of foreshortening. That is definitely something I need to work on, but um, it is not something that, uh, that I'm doing a lot of work on right now. I'm not at that point. So uh, let me fire up uh, Dynamic Anatomy, and uh, it's already in the Principles of Foreshortening. So we'll back up a little bit. We'll back up over here, and we'll get some uh, we'll get some reference in here, so we can uh, so we can kind of talk about where things are and how they fit together. And we're gonna start here at uh, yeah. Since we're Since we're going to be looking at the PDF, I don't need the actual physical book out. And, uh, and let's begin up here. I'm going to grab myself a screenshot, and we're going to pull up the uh, we're going to pull up what Hogarth says about the leg. The upper leg presents a roundly formed tapered cylinder, somewhat flat on the inner leg area, but markedly broad at the trochanter and compressed toward the knee. So if we just go from that description, okay, if we just say okay to that, and uh, we come over here and we jump into our sketch layer, a roundly formed tapered cylinder, here's the round end of the cylinder, somewhat flat on the inner leg area. So we've got here the hip, and here's the leg, but markedly broad at the trochanter. The great trochanter is right here. And compressed toward the knee. So as you come down, the cylinder is going to become smaller. So it's going to compress and taper, like so. And then here, you're going to have something of not really a uh, not really a corner. One of the things that I've noticed on uh, on the leg is that while the leg is kind of round all the way around, you've got this inner 
kind of this is the tenderloin on a cow that's what it is and you get kind of this outward flare here's your hip here's the leg and the leg flares outward like so but you've got this big mass in there and that's just from observation you know let's uh let's jump in here and take a closer look at uh at how he actually diagrams this out and grab a uh, screen clipping there and we'll come down here and control v and it's been dropped under the wrong layer let me move it to the top control t and we'll pull this out so it's visible and you can see here the way that he exaggerates the uh, the construction of it but uh, let's come down here to our sketch layer uh, yes apply the transformation sorry forgot to do that so let's come down here and we'll take a look and we've got kind of here's a triangular shape here's the uh, here's the buttock okay and then you've got a muscle there and then you've got kind of some tendons there there's a big muscle here big muscle here it's the other side of that and then you've got another muscle that kind of peeks out along the side there a little bit there and then you've got that little tenderloin that I was talking about in there so you've got kind of this round round thing going on here and then over here on the inside you've got more uh, tendons and all of that sort of comes in there's kind of a box shape to the kneecap that he shows here And then there's sort of that uh, that little bit there. And then there's the tibia. You can actually see he's got that little sliver of bone poking out. And then he's got all of the stuff from in there. Now, um, this kind of exaggerated form, this is really not going to... Uh, this is not going to be that useful for me in looking at, uh, in looking at anime shapes. But uh, let's take a look at what we can learn from it. We want to look at real anatomy before we look at cartoon anatomy. So we've got, we've got the hip here, and then we've got the gluteus medius and the gluteus maximus. Here's the ball of the great trochanter, and here's this big muscle over here. Here's the thigh muscle over here, big thigh muscle, other big thigh muscle that comes down a little farther. Here's the kneecap, and here's kind of that tenderloin area. So, we can broadly simplify this as one big mass with a little triangular mass there. And then we can do triangular mass, round mass at the back, and uh, the rest of the thigh. So there's kind of a... It's kind of this shape. And when you, uh, when you look at it from the side, let's see what we got going on over here. Um... Here's another text description I'm not going to get into right now. Uh, here is... Here's the other leg from a slightly different angle. And uh, let's come in here and we'll paste that. Transform it, like so. And then what I would like to do is um, once I've got it into approximately the right location, I want to say OK on that. We, uh, we want to grab um, selection from layer, create selection, and now edit, transform, flip horizontal so now we're looking at uh, now we are looking at the other side of the leg okay and that's okay that's exactly what we want to do let's deselect so this is kind of more the uh, the sort of thing that we're looking at in terms of uh, in terms of the silhouette and it's the silhouette that I really want to work with me uh, drag that up here so really what I'm looking at is just kind of this line but what we're looking at here is a very masculine 
formation. So there's kind of, there's the butt, and that flows into that, and that flows over here. But this is a very masculine form, and what you want to do to feminize this is, number one, you want to smooth it out. So if I take... If I take this silhouette and we want to kind of feminize that, let's uh, let's first of all duplicate the layer. Let's yeah, let's duplicate layer and we're still on move layer, so we'll move that over. And now we'll uh, move this layer over a little more. So we'll start with that silhouette there. And we'll take that silhouette there. We'll line them up pretty much the same right there. And now what I want to do is let's um, let's go ahead and merge that down. Uh, no, not new layer. Uh, what I wanted to do was merge that down. Yeah, there we go. And I did want to keep the... Uh, did want to keep the... No, it's okay. So, yeah. In order to make this work, we have to set our color to black on both of these. This is a bit of a hoop to jump through. Then we merge down, and once we've merged down, we can now. Switch that back over to red, like we've been doing, and put that hue jack down to zero. Okay, there we go. So now we've got, that's, that's the way our sketch layer is supposed to be. I'm going to get rid of this layer four that I created here. Okay, so what we want to do to feminize this is, first of all, we want a smoother curve on the, um, a smoother curve, we actually do want a, uh, actually do want a, an additional layer here, and uh, we want this additional layer to be, again, the redness. And whatnot. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take, switch to a brush, we want to smooth this out. Let's smooth that. And here again, we don't want as much of a curve, and we want that curve to happen lower down on the leg. Same thing here. We want less of a curve. We want less bulk in a female leg. So we're gonna come down here and we're gonna we're gonna pull that off to give this a better, more feminized shape. And we're gonna pull that off. And again. And again, what we want to do here is we want to kind of pair off some of the some of the weight we want to uh want to make it more slender and less of a uh, less of a bulky muscular shape and again here this is bulky and muscular we don't want bulky and muscular on a feminine leg we want something more slender here um and we want that up on this layer. So we want we want a nice slender leg shape. pull that off and the same thing here we want this smoother less bulky let's pull
pull that off of this layer. So that's more what we're looking at. We also want less of a uh, we want less of a curve in this. We want the curve just to be kind of not curve of the ankle, but not as pronounced as the uh, as the muscular, beefy kind of male setup. So that's kind of the thing that we're looking at. We want to do a sort of um, Okay, let me hide both of those, and we'll, uh, we'll create a new composition layer. Duplicate the composition there, and we'll uh, change the hue to zero. So now we've got basically a new sketch layer here. And on this new sketch layer, what we're looking at is we want to kind of have... A more slender profile to the leg. So we're looking at something more like that. Now the uh, the knee here. I'm not sure how to do the profile of the knee. I don't actually need to do these for the project that I'm working on, so I haven't been working on them. I haven't been looking at them, but. Um, This would be kind of a uh, a typical sort of quote unquote feminine pose. They almost tend to have their uh, their toes pointed in towards one another, and they typically have one foot lifted. That needs a uh, a certain amount of depth added to it that I do not really know how to add. Um, Let's see what we can... He doesn't have anything about drawing women. Hogarth rarely talks about how to draw women as distinct from how to draw men. I don't know if he has any female examples here in this lower leg area. He doesn't. There aren't any. There are no female examples. There's a lot of uh, it's a lot of exaggeration in Hogarth's work. I really like the way he diagrams feet, though. At some point, I'm gonna get into how Hogarth talks about feet because honestly, the uh, the way he does that is just it's really amazing the way he uh, the way he kind of identifies the parts and how they fit together in a mechanical fashion. That's really, um, that's really well done the way he does that. Sorry, I didn't want to sneeze on microphone there. I've been sneezing a lot. My allergies are really kind of kicking in. But let me, uh, let me make this somewhat less obtrusive. Uh, one of the ways I can do that is by coming down here and using the... No, that's not it. Um, is it this? No, it's this. No. Starting with composition copy, there's... Um, so the fourth one down here, yeah, that's it. That's it. So I got to double tap that, and then I can move the layer upward. So that's kind of where that was, and uh, there's the foot. Goto would be interested in this. She always cares a lot about feet. I'm uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put this away because I don't know how very useful it is. Leg masses, I guess, is what I'll call that. Um, okay, so let's uh, let's fire up a new. Let's fire up a new 
illustration and kind of talk about uh, let's talk about some more anime focused elements um 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 What do we have here? Uh, we have a few examples. These aren't too bad. There's a um, an example here that uh, that isn't terrible let me just uh, make it large enough that you can actually see it and that's kind of uh, yeah supply the transformation so if we put that under uh, if we put that under all of the layers then I can come up here to sketch and I can just go you know here is the uh, here's kind of the silhouette and you've got the shape of the kneecap and here you can see there's less of a curve here on a male calf you get kind of a big bump that curves up high and it's much more uh, much more pronounced but on a female you get more of a smooth curve right there not sure here the big toe would be over here so I'm not sure what this shape to the foot is supposed to be doing here again there's the knee they're kind of doing a the side you're looking at and the side away from you so if it was the other direction if you were looking at it on this side then you get kind of that sort of thing <laughs> But that just goes into this smooth, tapered, cylindrical form right there. Same here. So that's uh, that's one example that I immediately find. <laughs> then there's uh, what else do we have here? Basic character forms. They don't really talk a whole lot about leg forms, but they do build some. Um, they do have some construction images in here. That, uh, man, you really can't see these. But they do have these kind of. Uh, example poses and whatnot that I, I guess these are useful I mean I don't uh, I don't see them being especially helpful if you understand how bodies work and what the proportions are and I've been working a lot on proportions so that's not really an issue uh, these would uh, these would work better if I put them in screen mode Wait, is that screen no that's not screen it's um there we go You just drop these down and put them in multiply mode, so they're uh, so they're kind of overlaid on the uh, on the image, and I'll duplicate the sketch layer, turn off the copy, and go back to the main sketch layer and just delete everything. That's a useful way to do that. Okay, so if we come down here and go to uh, they have other useful they really don't not in this one um, what have we got here uh, drawing the body here's something useful The 
difference in male and female butts. The only other person that I've ever seen cover this is Holly Brown. She had a very good job on that, by the way. And she was talking about why male and female butts are different. She's totally right. She did a very good job explaining it. So uh, we'll put that over there, and we'll uh, once again put it in multiply. Uh, let me look through here. I'm trying to find more stuff about the silhouette of the legs. I'm not seeing a whole lot. Um... There's not a whole lot in this one either. Okay. What about this one? Oh, that's a that's a chibi guide. Okay, what do we got going on here? Uh, our table of contents. I didn't, oh, damn it. This has got to be one of the worst streams I've ever done. Here's a reasonably decent uh, example. You can see here that uh, this actually has the feet angled outward here. The feet are angled outward rather than uh... Oh, I'm trying to draw on a hidden layer. Hold on here. I'm trying to draw with the bucket there. Alright, so uh, here we've got the feet kind of angled outward and you can see here's one knee. And they're uh, they're defining the knees a little bit differently here. They're showing one side and the other side, and then they're using the shadow to define that, to kind of show where that is, and that's really well done. But um, you can see here that the, uh, that the feet are angled outward, and here, once again, on the inside you have the big toe, and on the outside you have all of the rest of the toes. And you have kind of this plane change. You look at the feet, and they kind of come out to the side there. So here's kind of, again, you've got this lower, more rounded aspect to the calf, and that just goes directly into the thigh. I think I just draw thighs too thick for women. Because typically with a guy, you have a very wide thigh, and then you have this kind of bulging calf, but the calf is, you know, significantly smaller. And then you've got the foot over here, and you've got that plane change right here. But over here, you've got this kind of splayed out shovel thing going on. But, uh, but... On the women that I see in anime, they tend to just be, like, straight, straight. And part of that is because in the West, you see, uh, you see women that have much more slender legs, okay? Much less developed. Because in Japan, they walk a lot. So even the girls develop these very strong, well-developed calf muscles. Because there's a lot of walking if you live in Japan. You know, it's just the way that it is. There's a lot of standing up on the subway and all that sort of thing. So they naturally get more calf development. And at the same time, they're not fat pigs like Americans. So they don't develop these huge thighs and butts like we have over here. But yeah, um, that's, a, uh, that's a good example there. Help 
helps if you select the right layer. Do -do. That's not it. Uh, is that it? Yeah, that's it. Okay, so we'll move that over here somewhere. Shrink it down somewhat. Actually, let's move it over here. We'll put it over there. That'll work. Uh, okay, let's take another look through. You know what? Let me just uh, let me just go to my picture library and um, we'll grab some examples of girls' legs. Here's um, huh. a whole lot in that folder. Um, I don't think we have a lot of... Yeah, she wears those big baggy trousers. Uh, Megaman is not a terrible example, but... Uh, I don't have a lot of examples. Well, there is her, uh, there is her core reference that has kind of the, uh, that has kind of the silhouette in it. So you can, uh, you can zoom in on that, and then, let's see, are we on move layer? We are on move layer. So we can move that over, kind of get a better look there, and if we create a new layer, we can uh, and just grab a red color, grab a brush, much smaller brush, and kind of, Here's the external line. You see, once again, that curve of the calf is up high. And you've got sort of this, um, just the shadow of the kneecap, not the whole kneecap. But you get this kind of curving thigh and then a curving calf. You get sort of this thing going on. Just that little line to indicate that there's a knee. And you have the same kind of thing here. We've got the uh, flat at the back, curved at the front, and then the opposite down at the bottom when you're going from the side. Flat at the front, curved at the back. And you got this kind of thing here. Flat front, flat back. You know, just that's just Japanese women in general, flat front, flat back. That's terrible. That's Asian women in general. That's Korean women too, and Chinese women, for the most part. But um, I don't know that this is that helpful because, among other things, it's not very high resolution. What about Kasara? Kasara does a lot of kicking, so surely there's a lot of. Yeah, but they're all distorted. What about what about Mimaru? Don't have a lot of great references on that. That's uh, here's one right here, and you can kind of see this is where the um, this is where the leg would be. And here's where the silhouette sort of falls on that. So there's a leg there, and there's that, and that. I'd come up here, and here's the... And she's got her hands behind her back. You've got the breast that's facing towards you and the breast that's facing to the side. There's a, breasts, are, breasts are organized on a 90-degree plane. They're pointed 90 degrees away from each other. So if one of them's pointed right at you, you're seeing the other one from the side and vice versa. And when you're looking straight on, the nipples point off to the sides. They're not like headlights that people always get that wrong. And it looks awful. But yeah, 90 degree spread. Same with male nipples, but nobody ever pays attention to male nipples. Male nipples kind of sit off on the corners and people forget that. They want to put them in the middle, like right here. No, they're down here. Mimaru doesn't present a whole lot of 
food options either. What about the... Um, not on from Kill a Kill kind of does. Here's a, here's a good one. This is actually this is a very good piece of fan art that kind of showcases. That looks like this would be good. This would be a good reference for high heels. But you can see here, we've got the uh, we've got the compression of the thigh. When we uh, when we zoom in on that, I, mean, I should really be drawing on another layer anyway because I'm a terrible person. But you can see right here, they've got the compression of the thigh from the stocking. That's important. That's highly important. People notice that. They look for that. Because people are perverts. But yeah, that... Uh, that is definitely the kind of... Uh, I just want to move the whole thing, is what I want to do. I want to focus on the legs here. And the uh, the basic idea of... how the thighs and the knee construct. The knee kind of... I don't really know how to think of the knee. Does the knee wrap around over things, or does it go under things? still kind of wrestling with that in terms of in terms of how that fits together and what that means you get your thigh up here but is the knee over top or is the knee kind of coming up the knee is definitely over top you know what this is um this is covered in hogarth's principles of foreshortening the interlacing of the joint to the advancing member. Here, we attach the knee to the upper thigh because the upper, th because the front leg is staying where it is and the back leg is moving backward. Because the back leg is going back away from us, we want to have this part that is in the front and you can see that you've got a stronger highlight here and a weaker highlight there to show that that's farther back. So that leg is kind of going farther back. This part is in front of this part. So you interlace the knee to the upper thigh. Whereas here, as this comes down, we kind of have an interlacing of that joint to the lower leg because the lower leg is thrusting forward and the thigh is proceeding backward. You can see that when you kind of draw this out and you see there's that form and here's this form. This is kind of a um, this is kind of a weird pose to be honest. But part of that's just the angles and whatnot. And this is just me thinking out loud. It's not any kind of uh, not any kind of meaningful lesson or anything. So let's see if we have anything better in here. Um. We've got Roy Mercury, but she's always wearing uh, very frilly and elaborate clothing. This picture of her with Mute is, uh, yeah, her leg's almost completely covered up, but you do have the... Uh, There we go. 
Okay, so there's that, and what we've got here is just kind of, this is more or less flat, because we're looking more or less from the front. You can't see this leg here. Here's Mute's leg. Mute is a bird person, so her lower legs are even thinner than, uh, than is typical. She's got those little stick bird legs. She's a harpy. I think I've got, um, oh, who's the, uh, the girl from uh, Monster Musume. Yeah, um, Poppy. You can see here that, um, Her legs are very kind of normal human legs with scales. But she's got the digitigrade formation down here where the, uh, where the ankle extends out very far forwards into the foot. Typically with, a, uh, typically with a bird, what you see is more along the lines of this part up here is almost entirely concealed inside the bird's body. And what you mostly see is a very long calf and a very long foot. And they're just using their toes to grab onto things. And this is kind of, this is what you see of the bird. And the bird's legs appear to be anchored here, but they're actually anchored back here. And they have that uh, that back part of the leg they just don't uh, you just don't typically see it because it's concealed in there let me see if i can find a better picture of that just to kind of evidence let me uh, let me look up yeah if you look here at this uh, at this x-ray of a bird Um, control T and we'll uh, make it smaller so it will actually fit. Drag it down somewhat. And, uh, and here we have, uh, this bird. Everything is actually anchored. Everything is actually anchored all the way up here. Okay. But people always think of the bird as having kind of hips in this area which would have their legs anchored here, and it looks like their legs bend backwards. But their hips are actually all the way back here. And they've got these knees that are all the way up inside of their body, and that are just kind of free floating around inside there. And then they've got the, uh, they've got the legs visible outside. You've got the calf here, the foot here, and the toes here. So what you're looking at is just the calf, foot, and toes of the bird, as opposed to here, you could see here's the main thigh, right here, here's the calf. Typically what you would see is the bird's body would come all the way out to here, and this would be back at the back of the bird. So all you'd really see is you'd see the knee, and the calf and the foot coming out of that, and then the toes. But uh, Poppy in particular, they have a very different formation for. Now, this is also a great example of a twisting pose because she's got, uh, she's got her legs coming down here. And you can see that right here, we've got the hips facing more or less this direction. Whereas the chest is more facing this direction. And you've got this difference there between the two. If you looked at them from above, you would have kind of this twist in the, uh, you'd have this twist in the body right there, which kind of, it's visible here in this wrinkle, 
and here in this one right there if I turn this off it's much more visible if you look like right in there and right there and there and you can see that kind of twist going on which is really kind of cool it's really well done and it's kind of minimalist and I love the way that that's done I'm not good at that sort of thing that's uh that's why I'm doing the kind of stuff that I'm doing <laughs> And I'm trying to get better at this shit, which I never really seem to. My uh, my brain is really not in this tonight. I'm just trying to uh, just trying to do the best job I can for anybody that actually shows up and wants to watch me sketch for some reason. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm selling this thing really, really well. Oh, I have to, uh, what do I need to do here? Um, that actually looks good enough. I got a, uh, I've got another, I've got another video that is in the process of uploading. It's the uh, 41st video in my Minecraft 1.18 Deadstream series. So uh, I just uploaded that and I'm going to, uh, toss that up onto the um, I'm going to toss that up into the into the content farm and uh, yeah it's, um, that's all kinds of fun and that just popped up in announcements over on the discord server because all of my videos are announced over on the discord and uh, nobody's bothering to look at any of this so <laughs> All of my streams are dead streams. Nobody ever shows up. That's fine. Say, maybe it's just practice. It's all practice. People show up or not, it's practice. Everything you do, practice. It's all practice. You're doing nothing but practice all the time. I always get people that get mad about the idea. Oh, you're practicing. I'm not practicing. I'm good at this. Oh, you're, you're good enough that you never need to learn anything more? Wow. I've never been that good at anything. Uh, okay, so let's uh, let's see if I can find any other. Um, let's see if I can find any other good leg references. Uh, got some photographic reference, but that's not really what we're looking for. Here's Rem Galu. That's uh, that's something. And um, <sighs> keep forgetting to change windows. Okay, so let's uh, let's bring that up, and we'll take a look at. Um, okay, we're on a brush. And we've got kind of, here's the edge of the thigh, here's the line of the calf, and you can see here we've got sort of the pigeon toe thing going on with uh, one toe pointing in. Can't see her knees at all thanks to the, thanks to the armor. And you know what that means, that means that whoever drew this can't draw knees. Yes, we see you. We know exactly what you're doing. All your characters have their hands in their pockets or behind their back. We know what that means. We know what you're doing. Yeah, that's kind of... This is the shape that they're going for here. Going for That shape actually starts way up there. And then it's a good way to generalize this. You've got that sweep down from the waist, and then you've got this kind of sweep down here and a sweep down here. And then there's your thigh gap. So yeah, if we go over to uh, if we go to a new image and we just go, just kind of we just kind of go. Okay, here's let 
let's put this back on brush size. So if we just uh, do this kind of sweep down thing, and then there's the calf. And then over here we have another kind of sweep down thing, and that comes over like so. This comes over like so. And here's your, that's way too much of a gap. So that needs to be wider. That needs to be wider. Got something more like that. Does that generalize well? We've got, uh, here's the back. And then at the waist, we just kind of taper into that. That comes down, that comes down. There's your thigh gap right there. That's, that's not bad. These kind of, um, these kind of shapes that emerge from looking at uh, from looking at other people's work those are uh, those are important the sort of emergent notion of this is kind of the overall structure what lines to draw where to draw them and why? That stems from about the same place. And then there's your waist right there. Well, not really your waist, there's your hips. So what we've actually got is we kind of, we swoop in and then from the narrowest point, we kind of draw one smooth line. And then we go from just below the hips and we draw another smooth line. those two lines together define the uh, the shape of the crotch which of course happens exactly halfway down the figure now you start with your anime titty of course and then here again we've got sort of and this is about where the halfway point goes. The crotch goes at the halfway point of the character. You got your head, you got your shoulders, you got your waist, and there's your legs and whatnot, and that should be pretty much exactly halfway, including the head. It's a good way to locate those things. When you're drawing in isolation, that's not too helpful. You could use the desired thigh gap to set the width. And then that would give you kind of a clear picture of where you wanted everything to go. And you've kind of got the back is typically wider than the front. And of course, on a woman, you've got the breasts, which are pointed, again, 90 degree angles away from each other. It's the center line, that one's pointing over there. This one's pointing over here. They kind of expand outward. And again, the uh, the breast emerges from under the arm, not from uh, up higher on the chest. Breasts do not come down from here. They come up from under here. Okay? It's like they're... Uh, if they just hung and didn't actually have any uh, any connection to the chest, they would hang with the nipple facing backwards. So they kind of come out from here and they swing around and the nipple sits right about here. It points off at an angle, the same way male nipples do. Right in there. And this uh, is not the greatest camera position. I can modify this camera position somewhat, can't I? I can modify it significantly. Um, I don't like the camera being up this high. I would prefer the camera sit a little bit lower, so I'm not looking up at you. I can just look to the side, and there you are. Or there the camera is. Which, you know, the camera is the audience. I don't know how helpful that is. Um, has it been an hour? <laughs> it has been an hour. 
Okay, uh, I'm I'm really I'm not happy about any of this, and I haven't really gotten much of anywhere. But I hope you've learned something. I I know I've got some like pointers and ideas and places that I'm going. So I I I don't know. Like and comment and subscribe and do all the YouTube shit. Uh, that that that's it. Okay, bye.